Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash joshuavelas and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Joshua Vellis. I'm your host as usual, and obviously, welcome back to the show. Today's episode 186 of the show. Before we get started, we're going to do the house cleaning quick because, well, you guys know what I like to do around here. It only makes sense if we do it, so let's just get on with the house cleaning. I do want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening to today's episode. It really does mean a lot to me. You guys constantly take time in your days to download these episodes, to share these episodes, to constantly keep letting me know how you feel, whether you like my stupid face or not. Obviously, thank you to the guys or and gals <laughs> who are watching this on YouTube so you can see my beautiful or stupid face, depending on how you view me. And obviously, we do the audio versions of the show too. So you can listen to the audio version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or if you'd like to listen to your podcast. But either way, thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to say thank you guys for helping us hit over 2,600 total downloads. I really, really do appreciate that because, you know, almost close to 3,000 and I'm excited. So hopefully we can hit 3,000 by the end of the year or at least try to get 3,000 before the three year anniversary of the show, which is also crazy to think about too. I do also want to say thank you to the Patreon backers for supporting the show. You guys are greatly appreciated. And obviously, if you want to become one, you can just click the link down below and become a Patreon backer. So that's really all I have for the house cleaning besides like, you know, just how school has been going on my end, which I'll get touch of that at the very end. But we do want to have a little bit of a conversation about something that just came out recently. And I, you know, the title of this episode is, is the iPhone 13 dead on arrival? It's a tough call to make, but we do need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture here when talking about the iPhone 13 and you know, making comparisons, obviously the easiest comparison would be to last year's model, but I think the comparison goes much further than that. So I want us to take a trip down memory lane and let's talk about the iPhone 11 series, specifically the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. I remember vividly when the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max were announced. I personally believe that those were the last good modern iPhone that we've had in a very, you know, at least in comparison, when we're talking about the modern iPhone, we're talking about like, you know, obviously that should include the 6S, that should include, you know, the 7s, the 8s, the iPhone 10, the 10s, and then obviously the 11s, the 12s, and now the 13. I think out of that bunch, I do believe the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max were some of the best iPhones that we've had in a very good amount of time, at least in comparison to say the 12 series, or obviously now we have 13, especially from the XS. The difference between the XS and the 11 series was very resounding on how positively received the 11 Pro and Pro Max were, mainly because of their battery life. And we know that is true. The 11 Pro and when the Pro Max came out, the Pro Max was arguably considered a two-day phone. Some people can argue saying that, oh, iPhones have never had good battery life. That was an objective lie because you can objectively be proven false. It has been proven objectively that the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max had some of the best battery life we'd seen out of iPhones. And during that time frame, they also had some of the best battery life for the phones at that time. So... I've had this discussion with multiple people where people have debated that iPhones have never had a good battery life. That is a lie because we've seen the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max and how those easily, especially the 11 Pro, they were to go a whole day. So you wanna try arguing about battery life. We haven't had good battery life since the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. Because when we went to the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, battery life had definitely taken a bigger hit, mainly because of smaller batteries and also a 5G, which, just being honest with you, 5G is still an irrelevant feature. It does not matter. It will not matter for the next couple of years. 
because the infrastructure is still nowhere where it needs to be to be this big feature. And at the same time, the modems also drain so much power. It's just 5G is just pointless. It's really useless. Most people don't even have 5G to begin with in their area. So 5G, sad to say, is pretty useless. I'm just stating facts here at this point. Like, I know I could say it's my opinion, but even many tech reviewers have agreed that yes, 5G really isn't that big of a deal just being honest here but how does this all relate to the iphone 13 and obviously the pro and pro max so yeah it is true when people saw the event i think it was pretty unanimous a lot of people believe the event was pretty boring it was uneventful besides like the saving grace of the ipad mini there wasn't really much at this Apple event that screamed, I need to have this besides the iPad mini. The iPhone 13 series has been a very mixed bag, obviously, because at the time of this recording, all the reviews have gone live, or I say reviews, but let's be honest here, they're just previews. You're not really doing a review if you haven't had this phone for at least over a month. So sorry to break it to you, bud, but yeah. You're going to see a lot of previews, people saying that we've been using it for a couple of days extensively. That's not enough time to properly test something. Let's just be real here. I get it. There's a difference between a preview and a review. I just don't think you should be calling a review a review when it's a preview. Like if it's a preview and you've only had it for a couple of days, call it a preview first impressions. Don't go calling it a full blown review because you have not properly reviewed this item. Just stating facts here. But from what we've seen so far, yeah, there clearly has been some differences. A lot of people seem to be enjoying the bigger sensor size to let in more light for the camera. So the low light performance is able to be, you know, at least better in comparison to the 12. Obviously the 120 Hertz display, not that many people are really talking about it, but it's there because people have been wanting it for a while. What's really interesting is the battery life situation, especially when you're comparing say last year's models, because the 12 mini, out of the entire lineup was the most notorious for the worst battery life because it had a very small battery and you know given that it was running a pretty beefy processor yeah it kind of died really quickly and had the worst battery life of the bunch same thing goes for the 12. the fact that the 12 didn't even have good battery life that the 11 before especially like the 11 had good battery life because if we go even further back looking at the whole like modern iPhones, the XS, when the XS came out, they came with the XR. The XR had the best battery life out of that entire bunch, which is shocking that the XR had the better battery life, even though it was the more affordable option and it still had better battery life than the XS and the XS Max, which kind of says something. A lot of people really did not like the XS because their battery life was really bad. So that, that phone is a lot of people hated that iPhone. <laughs> they really did. But is the iPhone 13 dead on arrival? I think for depending on who's upgrading and where you're upgrading from, it's a tough conversation given that we've seen people like, trust me, I've seen multiple videos of people doing like tier listings of, oh, if you're on this iPhone, which for some of those, I agree. Like I would say if you're like on the six, anything below, I would, here's what I would say. Anything below the iPhone 10, I think you should upgrade. I think it's fair, even though, yes, I get it. Like, but the eight plus and then the eight and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there's some people that generally haven't upgraded because they don't want face ID. They don't want to deal with it. They prefer touch ID, which in my case, like you dude, I'm literally using the 2020 iPhone SE. So I know how you feel. I don't really like face ID. Like it's on my iPad pro. So I use it but I will say touch ID has definitely been more reliable than face ID and it always will be. That's just facts. I know people will try to say, oh, no, face ID is better. I'm like, no, bro, touch ID has always been better. A lot of people prefer touch ID, especially because we live in a society where yes, we're having to use mask. So, you know, it only makes sense that face coverings or any, any things that we have to personally use right now, like face coverings and stuff like that, are not the best when your phone has to use your face to unlock it. Yeah, it's not really that good of a situation right now, bud. So yeah, sorry to break it to you. But in comparison, from my personal opinion, if you're on the 11 Pro and Pro Max, I personally don't see a reason that you should upgrade. Heck, even to be honest, 
when you're at the 12 and 12 like the 12 the 12 pro pro max i don't even think you should upgrade from that i don't think there's anything that's really different that you are going to do differently with your phone because this is my mindset that i think is the healthiest mindset when it comes to dealing with oh trying to always be on the pulse of technology technology will change rapidly we all get that we know that technology is going to move quickly and things are going to change that's just how things are but if what you're doing is not being hindered by your current piece of technology why are you going to swap it out if you're not doing anything differently and i get it some people talk about the features like the cinematic mode the cinematic mode is clearly a gimmick it is not that impressive i know apple's like this will change cinema no it won't you are straight lying to yourself if a smartphone is going to be able to give you the same quality and capabilities as a camera that's probably worth thirty thousand dollars that they were shooting that said commercial yeah sorry to break it to you but the cinematic mode is a gimmick I think in time it should be better, but what we got right now, it's clearly a gimmick and that's all it is. It's not the most reliable. It clearly has bugs, has issues. I think in time it'll get better, but outside of the cinematic mode, okay, we get bigger batteries and better battery life in our iPhones. I'm like, hooray. It only took you guys realizing this long enough that you, you know, adding 5G to your phones and not making the batteries bigger, but probably making them smaller was not a good idea like the fact that it took us a two generation cycle to get better battery life on iphones again is shocking the 11 pro and the 11 pro max already had the best battery life of the batch and you somehow managed to ruin it with the 12s and then you went back and added bigger batteries in the 13s which that's how I view the 13. The 13 is literally just a revision of fixing all the issues with the 12 series. And here we go. We make it a whole new series. Like to be honest, the 13 should really just be called the 12 S because that's really how they are. They're not big improvements of, they're really not big improvements. I know there will be people saying, Oh, it's such game breaking. This is game changing. This is the best smartphone camera ever. I'm like, dude, it's really not. <laughs> Like, I know that it's hard to believe because I get it. We got to do the whole marketing spiel, you know, how, how ironic the marketing majors trying to call out marketing. I'm like, yeah, I can see it from a mile away, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> I can clearly tell this is just a marketing spiel, which I find it funny that they say the iPhone 13 pro or pro max have the best cameras out of every smartphone this year. When we're ignoring the Pixel 6 revision, or primarily we're ignoring the Pixel revision, which is the Pixel 6 coming, and that phone is definitely keen to be one of the better smartphones of the year, given from what we've seen and how Google is actually taking this seriously now. Yeah, I'm not going to be surprised if this phone ends up being like Google's actual like homecoming party that they make a great amazing phone that is universally loved and not hated and it's not a niche product let's be real i love the five i love the pixel five it was one of my favorite phones of 2020 i still think it's the most underrated phone of 2020 but i think with the pixel six we're going to see something crazy but i think with the iphone 13 it's just a minor revision like yeah we get a bigger battery we should have had a bigger battery like we should be making these phones i know it's a bit controversial where some people are like ooh put a bigger battery in our phones. And I'm like, yeah, we should have better battery life on our phones. These are literally devices that we use in our everyday lives to do many things. I don't care how many features you try to slap into this thing. If your battery can't hang, I don't care what features you have because they don't matter when your phone is dead. And yes, I do agree. Some people are like, well, we need better charging speed as well. And I'm like, yes we do just make sure that it doesn't degrade the health of the battery which it's still better to have a bigger battery in the end overall i i don't know i think with the iphone 13 it's one of those weird cases of the 13 yes i would say is the best value of the bunch i think the pros are good in the sense that yeah we get bigger battery like the pro max specifically because it has the biggest battery of the bunch but 
I think extensive testing is definitely needed for these phones. We really need to see how good the battery life is and you know, test Apple's marketing claims for this. I think also testing the marketing claims for the new processor and testing how powerful it really is and how well it actually does in real world. Like, does that extra CPU core like do anything? Does CPU, CPU core actually help at all? And it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't see why you should upgrade if you're at the if you're at the 12 series. I don't think you should upgrade. I think it would be a poor decision to upgrade from the 12. Unless you really just don't care. You just always want to have the latest and greatest. Hey man, you do what you want to do. But if you're really conscious and really care about how you spend your money, I do not believe that this would be a wise investment because you're not really gaining much and you're not doing anything different with your phone. You are gaining nothing. You really aren't. Like some people say, oh, but the 120 hertz display, that changes everything. Dude, higher refresh rates besides gaming is not that important on smartphones. It really isn't. I have been telling people this for a long time. If we really wanted smoothness and also keep great battery life, yes, either put a bigger battery or focus on 90 hertz displays because 90 hertz displays are better. Like I remember my one plus seven pro when I had that sucker, one of the best phones I've ever had. And it was a 90 Hertz display. And I do believe that the, the 90 Hertz display was the good sweet spot that it really should have just stayed at, but I get it. Everybody's like, Oh, I have 120 Hertz pro motion on my thing. It scales all the way down from 10 or scales all the way to one. And, and I get it. It makes it easier. So you can watch cinematic content because obviously, you know, you split the refresh rate and then you're able to view 24 you know, frames per second video and you know, the way it's supposed to be watched the movie because everyone's like, Oh, if you watch a movie, then it should be in 24 P or, you know, not 24 P, but you get what I mean? Like 24 FPS. That's what it should be because frames per second that it should be in 24. It's ironic. Cause I shoot these videos for the show at 24 frames a second. So, you know, it is what it is in my personal opinion. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that the iPhone 13 is dead on arrival. I don't see a reason to upgrade unless you're like, you know, unless you're just on a super old iPhone, then yeah, go right ahead. I think the better value of the bunch is going to be the 13. The fact that it gave us good battery life again. I think the 13 mini is going to be a very interesting test once people have been properly testing it. You know, obviously I'm making it clear that all of these are my observations that I made so far viewing other content since I will not since obviously I don't have the phones up front I you know I'm not some super big channel that gets these things early but based on my observations and based on what I've seen so far from a value perspective I don't see any value being gained from getting this phone and this is a like I'm telling you guys as a marketing major we're taught to create value for you to buy stuff if you if we can't convince you of the value of this item there's no point you're not gonna buy it if you don't see value in it you're not gonna buy it that's just logical human thinking that's how we're like you know that's how they're teaching us about how to be good marketers is creating value for your customers and at this point it's like the 13 doesn't offer value you're better off waiting for the 14 because i know we're not trying to say leaks are the be all end all but if the rumors are true that the 14 will be the bit will be the bigger redesign of this of the iphone which we'll see the notch finally go away we'll actually see a thicker phone with bigger batteries i'm like yeah i'd rather wait for that like in my case like i'm fine with my iphone se because people talked about the iphone se as like one of the phones that you should upgrade from and i'm like no not really if you have the battery case which is pretty easy to come by battery life is not an issue because the phone hangs really well with a battery case because it pretty much has the same battery life as the 11 pro max in terms of physical battery um yeah this thing will i can easily make this thing last the whole day like heck i probably couldn't kill most of the time i don't even kill the battery case in the day and i still have a full charge on the actual phone itself like you get what i'm saying like it's one of those things where we already had a great iPhone that I wouldn't be surprised if people will never upgrade from it because of how good they love it or how good it really was, to be honest, which was the 11 pro and the 11 pro max, just swap out the batteries in it. And there you go. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything, but 
again, I'm just making this clear. This is my opinion. You don't have to like my opinion. That's fine. You know, like you don't have to like it. If you agree with me, cool. But if you don't, hey, that's perfectly fine. You're all entitled to your own opinions. At the end of the day, I just think the iPhone 13 is dead on arrival. I think this phone is an easy skip. I don't see any reason to upgrade this phone. They have not given me any reason to upgrade from my iPhone SE to this iPhone 13 or 13 Pro Max, or you know, they haven't given me a reason to upgrade. And if you're a 12 owner, like an iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, you have no reason to upgrade. You literally gain absolutely nothing besides like slightly better battery life, which, you know, in my opinion, it's just, it's not worth it. I'd rather just, I think it's better to wait till the 14th, wait to see what the 14 offers. And if it gives you enough value to upgrade, then upgrade from the 14. But the whole point is like, if you don't need an upgrade, don't upgrade. There's no point. But I would also say if how you're using your phone doesn't change, then there's no point to upgrade guys. There really isn't. And I get it. It's kind of the opposite because these companies want you to upgrade. Like that's why they're trying to do all this marketing propaganda to get you to upgrade but you don't gain anything if you're not doing anything differently what's the point of upgrading you know that's just you know that's just my two cents but i do want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening or watching this i really appreciate it thank you guys so much for your time because obviously time is a very important thing that you can't get back i thank you for sharing it with me and allowing me to have a piece of your time and a piece of your day whether you're driving home from work or just chilling in your house or maybe you're doing homework in your college dorm room and you needed something to pass the time i i you know, <laughs> I'm guilty about doing that last part. I really am not going to, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am guilty, but thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. I did also want to say, yeah, I wanted to get just a little bit of an update. Things have been a bit busier here than normal. Obviously we're getting ready for the job fair coming up soon. So I'm excited for that, especially being a junior that's going into my final year, like, you know, going into my senior year, which my senior year will be cut not short, but at least like, cause I'm graduating December of 2022. So I'll only do the fall semester of 2022 and then I get to graduate, but it's definitely interesting. This is going to be a fun time for sure. And then also like tests are starting to rack up and paper. So, you know, don't be surprised if I have to put out an announcement saying that, Hey, you know, if I can't do the episode Wednesday, then it will be done Friday. So don't be surprised about that guys. But I just, I'm grateful for you guys that you guys constantly keep coming back and just keep listening and watching this. It really does mean a lot to me. Please continue to be safe out there, guys. I know the world is still a crazy place. Let's be real here. We know this world is still pretty crazy, but, but just continue to be kind and respectful of everyone around you. Continue to be, you know, be courteous, be mindful, be respectful. And as always, don't do anything dumb, guys. But I will see you guys next week. I love you guys to death. Bye, guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button, or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I love you guys to death.